If you've been watching our videos for some time now, then you probably know that we love Easter eggs. They help relax the users and often make them smile. There are sometimes little details in popular movies and on TV shows that are simply amazing. Why, of course, those minute details we find in the real world. They give us this exclusive feeling, as if we were in the know and part of an elite group. We feel superior to those unable to keep up people on the other side. Here are 10 hidden details you totally missed in famous designs. Number 10. Google's Logo Google is probably one of the most important things we have in the modern world right now, so much so that the brand has become somewhat synonymous with the word research. Despite its pervasiveness in the world and the many iterations it has gone through over the years, there's just something about the Google logo that makes it look to be completely honest, a little too simple. Don't let that fool you though, as the company has a very specific way of creating their now iconic symbol, especially with its current form, which was created in 2015. First, of course, there's a color combination, blue, red, yellow, and green. All primary colors, except for the green, which reflects the idea that Google doesn't follow the rules. Second, there's the font, which was exclusively developed by the company in 2015 called Product Sans. Finally, there's the most elusive detail of it all, the spacing between the letters, which is measured by pixels. Specifically, going from between the first G and O up to the L and final E, the pixel measurements are 7, 6, 6, 11, and 8. In other words, they're not as perfectly spaced as you might have thought. It might seem like an inconsequential detail, but it's that exact precision that makes the logo authentic. Otherwise, you just have a poor imitation of it. Talk about tedious. Number 9. La Tour de France If there's one event where sweaty men in tight shorts are celebrated, it's La Tour de France. Also, it's the world's most prestigious bicycle race, but we love sweat and tight shorts better. That said, La Tour de France logo is actually one cute little piece of marketing. That is more than just some fancy assemblage of words. You see, there's actually a hidden picture of a person riding a bicycle in there. If you look closely at the letters O, U and R in Tour, you'll notice that it forms a figure of a cyclist. The R is the person riding the bike and the letters O, and you form the rear wheel and seat of the bicycle, respectively. The logo, which was designed in 2002 by Joel Gunnown, remains the same to this day. In fact, a lot of thought was put into creating it. For one, the font style used on the logo is meant to convey this very Gallic tone. Then there's the splashes of yellow on it, which resembles the Mallet Joan Award for winners of the race's respective stages. And of course, there's the aforementioned hidden cyclist to properly show what Le Tour de France is all about. Number 8. Hans Holbein's The Ambassadors For those of you who aren't familiar with Hans Holbein, he's one of the masters from the Renaissance period whose name doesn't end with Da Vinci. To cut it short, this guy is responsible for giving us an idea of what historical figures such as Erasmus and Sir Thomas More looked like in real life, and that's thanks to his realistic style. However, Holbein is not above adding some mean details to his work to give it some depth. Take the Ambassadors, for example, which is a portrait of John Dintville and George de Selve. There's what appears to be this weird-looking plate right at their feet. However, if you tilt the image a little to the left and look at it from the top, you'll find that it's a skull just rendered an anamorphic perspective. It's because Hans really liked to place references and symbolism in his works. In this case, one interpretation is that the skull represents mortality others. However, believe that the ambassadors was meant to be displayed by a stairwell and that hole by and place the skull to surprise and shock people who get to see it as they make the climb. Much like a very painstakingly crafted prank. Number 7. Michelangelo's The Creation of Adam Ah, Michelangelo, not only are you a great ninja turtle, but you're also one of the greatest artists in the history of our species. Case in point, The Creation of Adam, which is housed in the beautiful Sistine Chapel. Now what some may simply interpret as a portrayal of God's relationship with man and vice versa, he's actually one of the most radical interpretations of religion to have ever come out of the Renaissance. You see, God is actually inside a very particular shape, which you might notice is supposedly the outline of the human brain. So in other words, Michelangelo went past all that religious red tape when he tackled the subject of God. Some believed it's interpreted as God being the bearer of knowledge, while others think it's Michelangelo's way of flipping the bird toward the Catholic Church for rejecting scientific no. Whatever it is, it's pretty. Number 6. 
Da Vinci's The Last Supper. Barring the Mona Lisa, Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper is probably his most famous painting. The religious artwork depicts Jesus Christ and his apostles about to partake in a meal after a hard day's work of loving God and converting heels to Christianity. And before Judas decided to sell out his divine brother. Now one of the most famous theories surrounding the painting is that da Vinci purposely composed the painting to resemble a musical score with each loaf of bread and the biblical character's hands representing a note within its scale, which forms a 40-second musical piece. The person who discovered this Giovanni Maria Paula mentions that the composition is akin to a requiem, and according to him, it's like a soundtrack that emphasizes the passion of Jesus. So it must sound pretty overwhelming, since there is no evidence that da Vinci intended this to be so, we can't know for sure. It could just be a coincidence. However, given that Da Vinci was also with the music, it's not surprising to find out that it could have been a deliberate hidden detail within the painting. Either way, it's very impressive. Number 5. Van Gogh's Café Terrace at Night Since we're talking about Jesus' last chow time with his posse, no entry would be better than Vincent Van Gogh's Café Terrace at Night. At first glance, the painting appears to just be a post-impressionist rendition of people dining at a café in France during night time. However, there is a widespread theory that the people at the cafe actually resemble none other than Jesus and the Twelve Apostles. In other words, this is Van Gaal paying homage to one of the past masters. Apart from that, his father was a very religious man, which to some extent influenced his own beliefs. Or maybe this is just us reading into it too much. Like the way other people see Jesus' face on a tortilla chip, while giving it the benefit of the doubt you can see that just like da Vinci's portrayal of his holy meal. 12 figures around one man in the center, which is actually Jesus, according to some scholars. And hey, the central figure in Café Terrace at night looks like it's wearing a white robe. Isn't that Jesus' favorite attire? Oh, and look at that, there's a shadowy figure to the left that looks like he's about to leave. I hope he's not going to meet with some Romans out there to snitch on JC. That would totally suck. Number 4. Ghirlandaio's Madonna with Street Giovannino Domenico Ghirlandaio, although not exactly a household name like da Vinci or Picasso, is actually one of the most important Renaissance painters in history. For one, he taught Michelangelo. Oh, and he could also be one of the earliest UFO nuts in history. This is most apparent in his painting, The Madonna with Street Giovannino, which is a depiction of Mary and her divine kid, you might know as Jesus Christ. In a very unusual setting, except in this case, there's one glaring detail in the background. There's what looks to be a flying saucer just behind the Holy Mother. To be fair, however, there are some who believe that the circular flying object is actually meant to be a piece of Christian symbolism. In this case, it's a star, which was commonly used by artists during Gerlandeo's era. So either people were hardcore into aliens way back then, or Master Gerlandeo was one of the earliest trolls in history, who knows? Number 3. Bosch's Garden of Earthly Delights With a name like Hieronymus Bosch, it's no surprise that the man created some of the most majestic works of art in the history of man, and no work of his better encapsulates the description other than the Garden of Earthly Delights, which is a triptych that depicts the Garden of Eden, the earthly realm and God's final judgment. Of course, one's work can't be majestic without having a few curious details in it. In Nemo's case, yes, I'm calling him that now. It's a weird fascination with the human butt. If you're eagle eye though, you'll find wonderful anal details in the Garden of Earthly Delights, ranging from flowers, shoved into people's butts to people whose butts are facing the viewer, while lifting what appears to be demonic sushi, which also has butts in it right to the musical compositions painted on butts. Oh, Bosch, you wonderful weird man. Thank you for this, you just completed our lives. Number 2. Da Vinci's Codex on the Flight of Birds It's no overstatement. When we say that Leonardo da Vinci is the titular Renaissance man, he was a painter, sculptor, musician, inventor, scientist, and sex machine. Okay, maybe I made that last part up. The point is that his contributions are so vast that he deserves to land a spot in this video twice. But the thing is, portraits of the old master are very few and far between, which is why his codex on the flight of birds is one of the most surprising finds for historians the world over. You see underneath one of its pages, detailing how birds could fly and how to apply this to his inventions. There's a self-made sketch of the Renaissance mastermind's face, 
What we're trying to say here is that at one point in his legendary career, Da Vinci drew himself on a piece of paper, just for the heck of it, then decided that that same piece of paper will be better spent on theorizing how you can make flying machines by basing it on bird movements instead of just showing his mug for the world to see. And that, kids, is how geniuses are born. Number 1. The French Flag The French flag is probably one of the most deceptively simple designs out there. After all, it's just made of three equally proportioned vertical stripes, colored blue, white, and red. Come on, even kids can draw that, but you'd be wrong to think it was done without much thought at all. Like we said, it's deceptive and no, the stripes aren't really proportioned. All right, to be fair, the nation of baguettes and cigarettes actually uses a version where each stripe's width is of equal proportion. But officially, there's a regulation in the country which dates back to 1853 that opts for a 30, 33, 37 proportion measurement for the blue, white, and red sections, respectively. This means that the color red is actually the widest of the three and blue the smallest. So why not just make the stripes share the same width? Well, it has to do with the way the stripes appear when it's hoisted up on a flagpole. When you look at it from below, and it has the 30, 33, 37 scale measurement, the stripe's width appears equal to one another. Otherwise, they would appear disproportionate. Were you surprised by any of these? And do you know any more hidden details and famous designs? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to Brain Crane. Click that bell icon never miss another video. Thanks for watching.